Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Um, Janet and I are going to be working on a little project uh, this weekend. We're going to do some corned beef um, and we're going to do it in a new pressure cooker that we bought. Um, so we've got 14 pounds of uh, corned beef brisket and I'm going to get this cut up into basically three chunks and start uh, taking some of the fat off and then uh, anyway Janet's going to be down here with the little dog in an hour or so, and we're going to start putting together the first batch. So this will be kind of fun. Janet's here, so we're going to get this project rolling. You want to tell them what you're doing right now? Well, we missed St. Patrick's Day feasting here at the Epicenter, so um, we have decided that um, we're going to take Saturday to make a corned beef cabbage stew in our new pressure cooker pressure cooker fun okay and once it's complete we're going to freeze dry it yeah we'll probably do some taste testing before we freeze dry to keep a little bit out for ourselves but basically what happened is is um brian um went to his favorite cash and carry store and he got this giant slab of corned beef brisket uh this recipe calls for uh four pounds per batch um, in this batch, we broke it down, and we've got actually five pounds of brisket in this one that we're putting in. Um, and then we'll add the root vegetables and the other vegetables later. But for now, we're going to get the meat started. And Brian has trimmed this beautifully. And we're going to get this all situated. For our pressure cooker stew and <laughs> this is our first uh, pressure cooker ever so um, it's kind of an experiment um, but we'll see how this works oh look at that beauty that's a beauty right there huh okay okay what's next next is um, a tablespoon of the pickling spice in a little bit of water for flavoring. Okay. Then what? Then we are going to add one chopped onion. Spread that around a little bit. Get this flattened out. And then we add water. How much water? It calls for eight cups of water, but it's just enough to, whoa, it's just enough to uh, cover the meat basically. And less than two thirds. There's actually a yes, line back here. Right here. Okay, that shows maximum. And we're getting close. Maybe a tad more. There. Okay. I think that's all the water we're going to need. Okay. And I think that's it to get the meat going. So we are going to, I'm going to use my left hand here because I've got polluted fingers. <laughs> what do you do for cabbage? What a funny little boy. So he oh, likes you're a, lettuce. <laughs> you're a sloppy eater. He likes lettuce. He likes cabbage now, too. He likes cabbage. Do you want some more cabbage? <laughs> funny little boy. <laughs> He's a good cruncher. Ooh, boy, that sure smells good, doesn't it? Do hmm? you think it's done? Yeah, well, let's let's poke at it and we'll take a look. Ooh. So we haven't put the veggies in yet, but we're taste testing this corned beef. It's still a little hot. Mm. Oh. Yum. 
Wow, pressure cooking is the way to go. What a time saver. No kidding. That is amazing. Wow. So the amazing thing is, all those vegetables are going to take how long to do? Two minutes, they say. Oh, man. Okay, let's get going. <laughs> are you having fun? Yeah, this has been a, a fun day. Janet and I had an absolute blast yesterday uh, with the new pressure uh, cooker. And we made two batches. Today, um, I made the third batch. Let me show you what, what it looks like. So we ended up with two trays of vegetables and about three quarters of a tray of meat on this batch. Um, and so anyway, we've got the other two batches in the freezer right now. And uh, I've got a batch in the freeze dryer of something else. So as soon as that's done, then I can get this ready. Now let me also show you um, what I'm doing with the juice. Now the cool thing is we started off with water and we used the same liquid in each batch. Now the vegetables we needed to actually do separately uh, from the meat. So we did the meat first, pulled it out, then put the vegetables in. And we ended up having to do two batches of vegetables. There were way too many to put into the, uh, the pot in one shot. So. Anyway, but we used the same liquid for both of those in all of the batches, all three of them. So that liquid, let me show you what this looks like. Um, I'm reducing it right now, and then we're going to add it to the batch. Now, it, it, this, this is a lot of food, um, but we did this for a reason, because we want to try out our new can sealer, and we want to try out our new empty cans. So we're actually going to pack our own number 10 cans. This is, of course, not for sale. Um, the food is not. Uh, this is for our own use. But we may end up offering cans to people. It may not make sense to ship them um, because it's going to be expensive. They're bulky um, and all that. But uh, for local customers, we might end up offering cans if you want to do some of this kind of stuff at your own house with big bags of beans and big bags of rice and stuff like that. Well, the first batch um, came out of the freeze dryer and it turned out awesome. Um, the meat is absolutely dry and very tasty and of course all of this worked out really well. Um, and then I've got one other thing in this batch um, that I'm going to take a look at separately. but. Anyway, this worked out really well, so I'm going to get this ready, and I'm going to package it. Well, this is pretty exciting. Um, three quarters of a batch of this uh, corned beef fits in one number 10 can. So I've got the vegetables down below and the meat on top. So um, anyway, this is fun. It looks like we're going to end up with a total of about four cans out of three batches. So. Fun, fun, fun! There we go. I'm gonna put a couple of oxygen absorbers in here. So I'm gonna put 600 cc's of oxygen absorbers in there. And we'll get that sealed up. So the can lid goes on like this, and you can see that this looks totally different than a sealed can down here. You see the can has a little lip that goes this way and this is basically flat around there. So what the machine's going to do is it's going to roll this over and there are really two steps involved. So you put the put the can in position and then you raise this up, get that centered and then lock it into position. Now this machine has sort of a safety function where you have to have one hand on here to power it like that and then you operate it this way and if you let go it stops okay so the first operation is to roll that edge over slightly and prepare it for the second operation so the first operation takes place right here and we're going to do this slowly apply pressure put about 25 uh, foot inch pounds of pressure let that rotate three times Jenny's going to come over here, and normally you just do this in one operation. You just go forward and then you go 
back in this direction, but we're going to show you this now. You can see that this is not completely, you'll have to back up a little bit, Jenny, but you can see that this is not completely bent all the way over and tucked like this, like the bottom one. Okay, this is done by the first operation, and now we're going to do the second operation. And you'll have to get in here, Jenny, okay. to show that. Okay, so the second roller does that, and you pull, and basically three turns, and it's done. So, release the can, pop that out, and voila. Today we're going to try some of the corned beef and cabbage stew that Janet and I made. And uh, we're going to just open this up. We're going to put this in um, a pot here. We've got boiling water going. I've got to find my oxygen absorbers in here. I've got two of those in here. And here we go. Now you may not have seen, but there is actual corned beef right there. So this is going to be fun. Put a little water on here and uh, get this started up. Do we have a lid for that one? Yeah, we do. Oh, look. See how the vegetables are already shrinking. <laughs> That's kind of hard to see there. Now this was a stew, not a soup. So I'm going to put in just enough to have a little bit of liquid, but it really is a stew. At least it's intended to be a stew. Oh. How's that smell, Jenny? Ooh, it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> I love corned beef and cabbage, so. Okay. All right, we'll put a lid on that. I think that looks like enough water. I'm gonna put that meat down in there, make sure that's Good to go. Jenny is serving up. Well, I'm trying to make sure everybody gets a piece of meat. This batch didn't have a lot of meat in it, so. Well, I'm thinking so no. that one. There's one big chunk there. Good. There's another chunk. Okay, so there's, there's meat for everybody. Chunk. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. okay. Give it a shot, Jenny. It's hot. It is. <laughs> now, I love corned beef and cabbage, so I'm excited to try this. Let the juice work out. It's got a really good flavor. A little chewy. A little chewy on the meat. You but it could just be I have a fatty piece. Okay. Um, it seems fully rehydrated. Good. Okay. Good flavor. All right. You think they're gonna like it? No. <laughs> Jessica doesn't like corned beef and cabbage. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Mm. I'm sure Janet had some when it was fresh, not freeze-dried. I like it. Having never had your corned beef and cabbage stew before, I think it's good. And I'll take a can of that for my stock. Thank you. <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> okay, so... It looks like the corned beef didn't fully rehydrate. It's a little chewy. It's a little, a little firm. It's kind of like corned beef jerky, sort of. It's Not quite that dry. Well, it's got a good flavor. Um, there is definitely a a texture that is not like it was when it came out of the pressure cooker. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. The rest of the flavors are great. Um, the juice turned out really well, too. And here's Janet and little hey, puppy Molly. boy. Okay, we're going to get you set up with some corned beef and cabbage. Oh, yum. So this is our, our freeze-dried and rehydrated yep. from our big 
pressure cooker project. Yep. Mm, smells good. That's a really good recipe. It is. That's a really good recipe. Where'd you get that recipe anyway? From the pressure cooker cookbook. Oh. <laughs> it, it had stuff that I normally don't put in. The rutabagas and the turnips and it just, the root vegetables really added some nice flavor. Yeah. Mm. Okay, there's the big question. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. That is not like it when it came out of the mm -mm. Uh, pressure cooker. No, it was really tough. Too big of pieces. Okay. Is that what you guys thought? Yeah. Well, we kind of came up next time. We kind of thought maybe if we opened a can and did it again, take the bigger chunks of meat out, get them going about a half hour before in a pot. And maybe break them down. Break them, break them yeah. down yeah. and yeah. then add the stew because it is a little tough, but there, you can t tell the flavors there. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's supposed to, it's in between right ready and jerky, like right in the middle. I think you call it corned beef jerky. And yeah. it, it is. Um, and it, it seemed rehydrated enough. It just... It Maybe the chunks are too big. And that's why Mountain House always uses diced just, meat and everything. Yeah. Or ground. Or the little smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think for sure when we do the uh, other beef project, that's yeah. going to be an overnighter. Yeah. I don't like corned oh, beef and cabbage. <laughs> Um, I've had a bad experience in the past before, just one of those things where I happened to get sick right after I ate it with like a flu, um, so I haven't had it in years. I have to evacuate my house when my family cooks it. I can't stand the smell of it. This doesn't smell like corned beef and cabbage to me. It's more of like a stew type thing. I didn't really get any of the meat. It's mostly just the veggies. Would you like some meat? Your mom's cutting it up. She's cutting it up. I think I'll just stick with the veggies for now. Okay. Potato is good. And carrots good. There's a little bit of that kind of cooked cabbage taste, but in a stew, it's not off-putting. It does taste really good. I like the veggies. The veggies are an A-plus for me. Right on. How do you like the broth? Mm. It's good. This is a good, like, little stew type thing. I'm into it. All right. I like it. Taking one for the team. Everyone's making me try some of the corned making. beef. Making, yes. Do you have a gun to your head? Yes, I do. Oh. Several. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying this little piece of meat. <laughs> Jenny says it's not as briny as traditional corned beef. So that helps a little bit. And it doesn't look like I'm used to it. No, you don't like? I don't like it. Okay. Mm -mm. I just don't like corned beef. Okay. It's not I as bad. I was waiting for you to barf or to go to the garbage. <coughs> I think I'm gonna because I can't. It's the flavor of it. Well, okay. Spit it out. Okay. Okay, goodbye. He's gonna follow me to the garbage. No, no. But <laughs> this is our concoction, so. You know, the soup and the vegetables uh, turned out really good, um, and it's really got good flavor, and I don't think we even added any salt or pepper or anything to this, so um, I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, and what I'm even more excited about, one, two, three, four, five cans came out of that batch, those three batches. For the Epicenter.com, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.